Okay, this is part two of the making an oven out of a filing cabinet. Um, so I'm working on the doors right here. I'm going to be attaching the top two drawer faces, and then I'll attach the bottom two drawer faces. So I'll have two openings, one in the top and then one in the bottom, so I can kind of save heat if I ever have to open the door and not let all the heat out. Um, so what I've done is I've taken this part that I showed in the other video that came out of the face here, and I've cut pieces out of it to make these sections. I wanted these sections bent up because that helps with the moment of inertia in the bending force. So when I hook these together, the, they're going to stay pretty rigid by having these here. Um, so made sure I had those. These are flat just because they weren't fit, they wouldn't fit under there very well, but this does seem to be pretty rigid. I'm using rivets. I got this ordered this online. I forget how much it was. It was like 20 something dollars, maybe 30. It's the HP2. Um, I highly recommend it. It seems really nice. I'm not too familiar with rivets, rivet guns, but this seems really solid. And then also, I ordered the kit, so it comes with a bunch of different size rivets. I've been using the 8 inch diameter, 8 inch grip steel rivet. It also has a steel mandrel, and I think that uh, seems to work really well. Um, and then I just guessed, I'm assuming an eighth inch rivet would be an eighth inch drill bit hole, and I was right, it fits perfectly snug. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend using rivets for really any sheet metal project like like this or anything else. It's just really easy and pretty clean. Um, and then I'll be attaching these together, but I'll be adding space, which I'll just show you after this. In part one, you saw a part where I grabbed the metal that was in here and pulled that out. What I didn't realize at the time is there was actually some support there keeping this together. It's not really a big deal. I would still have done it anyway just to get all that metal out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a scrap piece of metal and stick it in here and just rivet it together there to hold it together and do the same thing for this side. Okay, so this is just a piece of scrap metal I put back here and I drilled a hole through them both. And now I'm just going to rivet it together. There. Okay, so finished getting that and that. And then I wanted to cover this hole, so I took a little piece of metal about that big and riveted it there by drilling holes. Got this side done. And then, if you recall from the last video, uh, this was loose down here, I'm trying to hold the light and not wash it out. But so I put a rivet right, uh, hold it with the flashlight. It's a rivet right there, and a rivet right there to hold these solid. And then actually, back here, I also put a rivet. Even though it was holding in place, I put a rivet here and a rivet here on this side just to make sure that that was sturdy in case it broke loose. So that's what I did for the main housing. And then the doors got these two riveted together. You can see the rivets in front. Um, I also hooked a couple pieces of scrap here, here, and here to cover up holes. Because there is an open hole there, an open hole down there, open hole here. And to save, save on rivets, I just used this screw from the handle as one of the anchors for this particular one. And I did, these two are identical. So I did the same thing with both of these. And that's where I'm at so far. So I've got two doors. Go forward. I'm gonna get some hinges of some kind, probably that can be used with rivets, and I'll just put hinges on the sides here. Keep moving forward. So I got my insulation in. I uh, ordered it from McMaster. That's all the information on it, and I ordered three. I just measured the surface area and calculated how much I would need. Um, this is one inch thick, and I think that should be good to cover the doors as well as the interior. And this is also rated to a thousand degrees, as it says on their website. This is where I'm at in my plans for the oven components. I went in and calculated the BTUs that I would need for the size of the oven. You can see here I just put in the dimensions 
and you can see the website up up here that I went to. Um, I don't anticipate getting up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but I put that in there to make sure I would have enough wattage. Um, you can see this came out at basically 1400 watts that I'll need. Um, so I went through and I went on this website and found this heating element for 120 volt. 1500 watts should be enough for what the size of the oven that I'm going to use. Um, using this wattage and voltage, I calculated the current that it was going to pull this heating element. So you just take the power divided by voltage. So 1500 watts over 120 is 12 and a half amps. So I need at least that amperage for the solid state relay that I'm going to use. This relay is a 25 amp relay, which that should be plenty. My coworker also has a relay that he said he might give me, so I might use that instead. But this is a relay that I would purchase from Arbor Instruments. Uh, this website's really good for lots of PID control up and things. Um, and then next, I need a PID controller to control the temperature that has ramp and soak features because for the curing the composites, it's not going to be just one temperature, but multiple temperatures over varied times. And this particular controller, I believe, has 30 ramp soak uh, features. Um, and then this will just output to the relay that I pointed out earlier. The thermocouple I'm going to use as a K-type, just this one here. It's rated to 780 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's plenty for the purposes of this project. So those are those parts. Um, I'm thinking about doing a convection oven style, so using a fan like this. And then the insulation that I'm using I got from McMaster. I actually ordered that already. It's one inch thick. It's rated to a thousand degrees. Um, and I just calculated the surface area of the oven and what I needed, so I needed I think I bought three of these, so that's where I'm at so far in, in the plans.